I've been pushing Molly, oh your mama push Molly. Yeah. <laughs> What's good everybody? What's good? It's your boy boy and we are back for another one. Y'all know who it is, Cardinal Bud Crawford. Or E S Red, if that's what you want to call me. Alright, y'all. Thank God. The heat is gone. Thank God. Thank you, God. The heat is gone. For now. It's supposed to rain. It's been supposed to rain all day. And it ain't squoze a drop. It ain't squeeze it a drop. <laughs> but let's squeeze out this topic real fast. New topic. New topic. Fact check. Terrence Crawford thinks his punching power is greater than Earl Spence Jr.'s. <laughs> Let's talk about it, man. This is a boxing, uh, boxing conversation, open conversation. So let's talk about it. Who actually has the greater punching power when it comes to Bud Crawford's and Spence Jr.'s? Um, I mean, you could compare, you could, you could compare the two, the two like opponents that they had, which were Sean Porter and, um, who was it? Sean Porter and Kell Brook. Uh, and, and you could say, well, okay, Terrence Crawford, uh, stopped Kell Brook. And I believe Earl Spence stopped Kell Brook too as well. <laughs> so that one's null and void. You know, you can't really judge off of that one. But what I, I will say about that is, you know, Terrence, I think because Terrence Crawford, I think, stopped him quicker than Earl Spence did, that people might believe that Terrence Crawford's power is greater than Earl Spence's is. What I believe is, I think, Kell Brook, his, his, his facial bones are just so damaged uh that if he was to run into the right shot from anybody uh he would probably stop try to stop the fight and um i i don't i don't feel like it would that terrence crawford did anything special uh in that fight to force kell brook to stop it was just the damage is already done uh terrence crawford caught him at the right time now let's move on. Okay, you got Sean Porter. Uh where okay, Terrence Crawford stopped Sean Porter. Earl Spence didn't. Earl Spence won, but I don't think he he stopped. It wasn't a technical knockout or a knockout. So uh I think people look at the stop the Sean Porter stoppage as an indicator that Bud's that Bud's power is is slept on, I guess, for lack of a better word, that his power is actually more because Sean, you know, nobody's really stopped Sean Porter, uh, his come forwardness. Um, but to me, I think that's false. I think that's um, it's a false sense of of power because number one, Sean Porter was laid off for, for almost two years. Anybody who gets laid off for two years is not going to come back the same fighter that they were uh, the two years before. And that even boded for Manny Pacquiao when he decided to, well, got basically got stuck over in the Philippines uh, for, for a year and a half, two years, and couldn't defend his uh, super title, uh, which threw a lot of monkey wrenches in his plans. But uh, when he came back, he 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 lost a step, and I I don't feel like I think a lot of people think he lost a step because he got older. Uh, I think he lost a step because of inactivity in the boxing ring. Uh, the guy we saw fight Keith Thurman and the guy we saw fight Ugas were two different versions of the same fighter. One was floating like a butterfly and stinging like the bee. The other one was stinging like a bee and wasn't floating like the. <laughs> So I think a two-year layoff could give you a false sense of uh, of a lot of things in a fight. If you were to beat a guy who previously hadn't been stopped, but took that type of layoff, 
And I think it's giving people a false sense of hope about Terrence Crawford and his power based off the fact that he stopped Sean Porter. Uh, now, okay, he stopped Kell Brook, too, I mean, not Kell Brook, but Amir Khan as a welterweight as well. But I think even, even, uh, even some of these YouTube bloggers <laughs> could probably stop Amir Khan at this point. Uh, and I would just leave it there. I know Caps are full of Gia document. <laughs> Looks exactly like Mike Tyson. <laughs> he was just scared. The, the, he was scary about it. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, man. I think the only... The way that you would have to judge this would have to be... Okay. In their last fight, who did the most damage? Now, this is coming off their last performances. Uh, <clears throat> who did more damage to their opponent? Ugas is a bigger fighter than, than Sean Porter, but Sean Porter, uh, I think people would, would rank Sean Porter higher than, way higher than Ugas. But in their prime, you know, but Ugas is physically a bigger fighter than Sean Porter is. And <clears throat> Sean Porter actually wasn't stopped it was a forced stoppage so that actually that that you know it's a it's almost like a misinterpretation of something because if his father didn't stop the fight he could have kept going now did i agree that the fight needed to be stopped yes i did but not based off the fact that he was hurt it was based off the fact he was frustrated so he was going to lose the fight anyway why why force yourself to be embarrassed for another four or five rounds, whatever was left in the fight, when you're already showing signs of, of frustration. And that's what I mean by the two-year layoff. That two-year layoff, it, 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 it made Sean Porter a different fighter. And it made him a different fighter in such a way that he couldn't even figure out the right things to do when he got into the boxing ring. And it became so frustrating for him that he hit the mat and started pounding on the mat like a five-year-old who didn't get their ice cream. So, you know, I think... I don't feel like Terrence Crawford really damaged Porter in that fight. So, I, you know, I don't give him his power that much of a big up off of that fight. I, I think other people might, you know, they might give him more props based off the fact that he stopped them. <clears throat> but I'm like, how did he stop them, you know? Or, what were the circumstances of that stoppage? And it, it wasn't because he took a lot of damage. Now, on the other hand, uh, Spence Ugas was a complete mauling. <laughs> he broke Ugas' eye socket. Ugas could not continue because he couldn't see. And I, I and it, you know what? It's it's another it's another misinterpretation off of that Ugas fight because the. There's a lot of people, I think, that feel like uh, Ugas destroyed Pacquiao and then Spence destroyed Ugas. So somehow that makes Spence ten times better than Pacquiao was. And I don't think that that was the case. I don't even feel like Pacquiao lost by, by that much in the Ugas fight. And if he would have tweaked one or two things uh, ahead of the fight, but he didn't have enough time to... If, and I, that's why I keep going back to if he had more time, he would have won that fight easily. Uh, because he did he wasn't far off from winning the fight. There were things that he did differently in that fight that he normally doesn't do. And you can tell he was prepared for Spence. Like he was fighting at a slower pace because I think he was preparing to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Earl Spence. And I don't think... I think because of that and, and stylistically that Spence and Ugas are two totally different types of fighters. When he tried to toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ugas, uh, even though some people might say it was the it was the massage that made him want to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ugas, it was this, it was that. No, I think that that was the game plan the whole time was to uh, stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Spence and try to out-punch him. And... Because Ugas has that weird looping and punch, and uh, I don't think Pacquiao's team actually even studied the film for that. 
I, it looked like they didn't even study the film for that because he was standing right in front of that punch every time. And that's why I feel like he was, that was the game plan for Spence because why else would you just stand there? Now, people would say once again that he was standing there because his legs were gone. Uh, some people will say it's because he was old. Some people will say it's because of the massage. Me, I think that that was the game plan the whole time. And when they finally figured out that the game plan for Spence wouldn't work against Ugas, it was kind of already too late. Because Pacquiao did make a little show. He made a showing in the later rounds of that fight. Uh, and it could have, it, like I said, with the better game plan, he could have actually won that fight. So I don't think it's a, it's a, uh, and that's a, a, a misconception, that's what I was getting at. It's a misconception because I told people before the Pacquiao-Ugas fight that if Ugas beats him, that once Spence beats Ugas, because I felt like it was a setup, once Spence beats Ugas, people are going to say that um, Manny Pacquiao was old, he was nothing, it was this, it was that. And it's all based off the fact that Ugas beat him and then Spence destroyed Ugas. And I, like I said, that can give you a false sense of things. Uh, but Spence did break Ugas' eye sockets. <laughs> so I, if you based power punching off of those last two fights, who did the most damage during those last two fights, you would have to ride with Spence and say, hey, Spence's punching power is 10 times better, 10 times harder or better than, than Terrence Crawford's because. He actually messed up a bigger, stronger welterweight than the one that uh, Terrence Crawford basically just technically knocked out and got his team to throw in the towel. So based off those factors, I would say, you know, just based off the last fight and, and, and how they ended, you would have to say that Earl Spence has the better punching power. I don't even see why it's a debate, really, um, because Terrence Crawford, once again, it goes back to resume and and the fact that he met a lot of guys at welterweight uh, when they were no longer in their prime or at their best. You know, he, he met them where they were, uh, you know, on the way out or becoming journeymen. So it's hard to judge Terrence Crawford's punching power. Is it there? I mean, um, it's not horrible. You know, I wouldn't say his punching power is horrible, but I, I would have to say that Earl Spence is the better puncher out of those two guys and I think if and when they finally do get in the ring uh, that's going to be the, the determining factor of the fight can Spence land those hard shots can he land them on the body can he get uh, Crawford in, 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 in position to throw and land those shots to really hurt him uh, and if he does hurt him like Bob Arum said how does Crawford actually react let me know what y'all think about that down in the comment section man i think i'm done rambling for now do y'all agree is 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 was that a good fact check and is terrence crawford's punching power greater or not greater than earl spence's is earl spence's punching power greater or not greater than terrence crawford it's your boy cardinal bud crawford or e s red if that's what you want to call me uh, hit me up on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. You're more than likely to get a response on YouTube. If you want to collab, holler at me uh, on my email. It's in, my, it's in the description of my channel. Uh, always email me. Send me some footage. We can, we can get down. I'll cut you into a video or whatever. I think we're out of here for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're out of here. So, until next time. We are not in love. We are not in love. I taught her how to rock it up.